Air India plane crash, which killed 260 people, has found the fuel control switches of the Boeing 787 Dream. It was supposed to be an ordinary flight, the kind taken every day by millions around the world. Passengers boarded, buckled in, and prepared for a routine journey. On June 12th, Air India Flight 171 was cleared for takeoff from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, bound for London Gatwick. The aircraft was a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, one of the most advanced and safest commercial aircraft ever built. With 230 passengers and 12 crew members on board, no one imagined that just 30 seconds after leaving the runway, this flight would become the centerpiece of one of aviation's greatest modern mysteries. This is the story of how a routine takeoff turned into a devastating crash, how one man miraculously survived, and how investigators around the world were left scrambling for answers in a case that raised questions far beyond one airline or aircraft. The tragedy of Flight 171 wasn't just an accident. It was a wake-up call, and perhaps something far more sinister. A routine day begins. That June morning, Ahmedabad Airport was filled with the familiar rhythm of air travel. Families hugged goodbye at terminal gates. Business people moved briskly through security, and children pressed against a glass to watch aircraft taxiing under the warm sun. Among the travelers was Vishwash Kumar Ramesh, a 34-year-old software consultant heading to London for a business trip. He was unremarkable to anyone who passed by, just another professional with a laptop, boarding pass, and a call home before departure. At the same time, Captain Sumit Subarwal, a respected pilot with over 8,200 hours of flight experience performed his pre-flight inspection. He was confident. The Dreamliner was the pride of Boeing, a masterpiece built with state-of-the-art materials, automated safety systems, and multiple layers of backup. It had a spotless fatality record across more than a decade of service. By 1.38 p.m., Flight 171 was cleared for takeoff. Passengers settled in. Among them were former Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rapani, medical students, young professionals, grandparents, and British, Portuguese, and Canadian nationals, each with lives and stories, families, plans, and dreams. The engines roared. The plane accelerated down runway 23, and then lifted into the sky. 30 seconds to disaster. Just 30 seconds after takeoff, the time it takes to read a text message, things went terribly wrong. For the ground observer, it looked off. The plane's nose was up, the wings were level, but it wasn't climbing. Instead, it began sinking, barely noticeable at first, then accelerating downward with increasing speed. Inside the cockpit, Captain Subberwall's calm training cracked just slightly as he issued a chilling message to air traffic control. Mayday, mayday. We've lost power. We've lost thrust. Inside the cabin, Passengers experienced what many survivors of crashes describe as a moment of unnatural silence and weightlessness. The aircraft, which seconds ago symbolized human innovation, was now an uncontrollable mass of steel falling through the humid Gujarat air. Then the crash. The Boeing 787 plummeted into the BJ Medical College hostel complex, igniting a fireball so intense it was seen miles away. Flames reached temperatures of over 1,500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt metal. 19 people on the ground, medical students and residents, were killed instantly. The total death toll reached 260. And yet, in a cruel twist of fate, one person survived. The sole survivor, Vishwash Kumar Ramesh, who had been sitting in seat 11A, emerged alive from the wreckage. His body was burned, his clothes tattered, but he was conscious. Later, he recalled fragmented details, flickering lights. Somehow, his seat had come loose and ended up in a less damaged part of the aircraft. He remembered stumbling toward a broken emergency exit and being pulled to safety by locals before emergency crews could arrive. His survival was deemed by many as miraculous. For investigators, however, he was something even more valuable a witness. His testimony would become one of the few living insights into what actually happened in those terrifying final seconds. A failure that shouldn't have happened. 
What shocked aviation experts wasn't just the tragedy. It was how technically impossible the crash seemed. The Boeing 787 is designed with redundant systems. If one engine fails, the other takes over. If an electrical failure occurs, backup batteries and emergency power systems are activated. In fact, most modern aircraft can safely glide to an emergency landing even after losing an engine, especially at cruising altitude. But both engines failed simultaneously on Flight 171. Even more puzzling, the aircraft's ram air turbine, RAT deployed. This device only activates when all electrical systems, including the engine's auxiliary power unit and batteries, have failed. Its presence indicated a total systems collapse, a scenario so rare and unlikely that many aviation manuals barely consider it. Flight simulations attempted to replicate the failure. In every scenario, test pilots managed to keep the plane in the air or at least guide it to a crash landing that allowed for some survivability. But in Flight 171's case, the plane fell straight down. No control, no maneuvering, no time. The question arose, how could a fail-safe aircraft suffer a complete loss of thrust and power 30 seconds after takeoff? The sabotage theory. Initially, authorities looked toward mechanical failure. But when both engines and the electrical systems were found to have failed, the needle pointed toward a more sinister possibility. Sabotage. No terrorist group claimed responsibility. No threats were made. There were no signs of hijacking. Yet the synchronized failure of multiple systems seemed too coordinated to be natural. The Indian government launched a full-scale investigation. Intelligence agencies were brought in. Every individual who had access to the aircraft, from mechanics to cleaning staff, became a suspect. Airport surveillance footage was reviewed frame by frame. Maintenance logs were combed for irregularities. Phone records, emails, financial transactions, all scrutinized. Could someone have tampered with fuel? Infiltrated the maintenance process? Introduced malware into the flight systems? The scariest part? If this was sabotage, it was invisible and undetectable, done with chilling precision and no clear motive. Experts now had to consider cyber attacks, insider threats, and system-level weaknesses that could be exploited silently. The human cost. The technical mystery is horrifying, but it's the human stories that break the heart. Former CMVJ Rapani was not just a public servant. His death was a national loss. Medical students on board had spent years preparing to serve others. Their lives and the potential impact they could have had on the world were lost in an instant. The grandmother visiting her grandchildren never made it. Her family had cleaned the guest room, baked treats, and made signs. Instead, they were left explaining death to children. An IT father had switched to this flight just to surprise his son for his birthday. What was supposed to be a joyful reunion became a tragic memory that would haunt that family forever. At London Gatwick, families waited. They checked arrival screens. They held flowers and signs. As news of the crash spread, excitement turned to confusion, then panic, then devastation. In Ahmedabad, hospital morgues overflowed. Many victims couldn't be identified visually due to the fire. DNA tests were the only option. Some families waited weeks for confirmation, clinging to false hope that their loved ones had missed the flight or were unconscious in some unknown hospital. Global impact and aviation reckoning. The crash of Flight 171 became a turning point. Air India grounded its entire Dreamliner fleet for inspection. Global aviation authorities demanded stricter audits of 787s worldwide. Pilot unions called for emergency training scenarios to include worst-case failures that were previously considered too unlikely. Boeing came under renewed scrutiny. Already criticized for issues with the 737 MAX series, the company now faced questions about its flagship Dreamliner. How could its most advanced aircraft fail so catastrophically? Automation, once hailed as aviation's greatest asset, came under fire. Was it making aircraft too complex to troubleshoot in real time? Was human intuition being sidelined by digital systems? Had reliance on automated diagnostics made hands-on inspections obsolete? 
Behind these questions was a more fundamental one. Had the aviation industry prioritized cost and efficiency over human safety? Infrastructure and urban growth. Flight 171 didn't crash into an empty field. It crashed into a medical college hostel in a densely populated area. This reignited debate about urban planning around airports. Many airports that were once surrounded by open land are now hemmed in by cities. Are we doing enough to prepare for disasters in such zones? Do we have effective evacuation and emergency response plans for dense urban areas? Are we accepting too much risk in the name of convenience? What we're left with? As of today, the investigation into Flight 171 is ongoing. Black box data has raised more questions than it's answered. Some experts believe it may take years to uncover the truth, if ever. Meanwhile, the world continues to fly. Every day, millions of passengers board flights, trusting unseen engineers, automated systems, and split-second decisions by pilots. Flight 171 forces us to ask, what happens when all those systems fail at once? What happens when the unimaginable happens? Not in a war zone or hostile region, but on a routine flight in broad daylight with a state-of-the-art plane? A final note, the 260 lives lost on flight 171 are not just statistics. They are reminders of human fragility, of the cost of complacency, of the dangers hidden behind the routine. The lone survivor, Vishwash Kumar Ramesh, carries not just scars, but the weight of memory. His survival is both miraculous and symbolic, a whisper from inside the disaster, urging the world to ask harder questions, dig deeper, and never take safety for granted. Their deaths demand more than mourning. They demand answers. And until we have them, the sky above us will never feel quite the same.